Hello, little learners. Welcome back to our pre-K and TK classroom. My name is Miss Laura, and I'm going to be your teacher this morning. Can you tell me your name? I'm so excited that you made it here this morning. Today is day two of the five days that we're going to be together this week. Let me add my magnet, day two. This week, we're talking about things that scare us. Have you ever been scared before? Scared is a feeling you feel in your body. Your body might quiver, you might sweat, you might even put your hands to your mouth and bite your nails like this. Yesterday, we read the story with Mrs. G of the little old lady who wasn't scared of anything. I think we're gonna need that little old lady today because in today's book, there's some creepy vegetables lurking around. I can't wait to read it with you. Now let's start our day though, first with our song of the week. Do you remember what it, the tune is? Where is Thumpkin? Now if you don't have fancy pumpkins like I do, you can actually just use your face and make the same emotion as my pumpkins or the same feeling. So here is our song, it goes like this. Where's my pumpkin? Where's my pumpkin? Here it is, here it is. Sad jack-o'-lantern, sad jack-o'-lantern. Looks like this, looks like this. Oh, look at that sad jack-o'-lantern. He even has a tear in his eye. Oh, I wonder what made him so sad. Where's my pumpkin? Where's my pumpkin? Here it is, here it is. Loved jack-o'-lantern, loved jack-o'-lantern. Looks like this, looks like this. Oh, I can tell our jack-o'-lantern's feeling so loved. Look at his cheeks are blushed and he has hearts next to him. Ah, oh, isn't it nice to feel loved? Where's my pumpkin? Where's my pumpkin? Here it is. Here it is. Happy jack-o'-lantern. Happy jack-o'-lantern. Looks like this. Looks like this. Ooh, look at his smile. I have a smile like that too because I'm happy to be here with you. Where's my pumpkin? Where's my pumpkin? Here it is, here it is. Angry jack-o'-lantern, angry jack-o'-lantern. Looks like this, looks like this. Ooh, why are you so mad, jack-o'-lantern? Look at his eyes. His eyebrows are turned in. Does that happen to you when you get angry? Let's do a few more. Where's my pumpkin? Where's my pumpkin? Here it is, here it is. Surprise jack-o'-lantern, surprise jack-o'-lantern. Looks like this, looks like this. Look at his face, he's so surprised. His eyebrows are raised in the air. I think we have one more. Oh, nope, that was all five of our jack-o'-lanterns. Can you make another feeling face? Oh, I'd love for to be able to see it. Now I think it's time for us to check our letter with Miss Maria. Let me get our doorbell here. She dropped off the mail earlier. There it is. So here is our letter. Remember, it's helping us learn to read. So remember, we start at the left and slide to the right. So this is the left, this is the right. When we read, we start at the left and slide to the right. Let's see what our clue is about the book that she delivered. Dear Miss Lara, I love vegetables. Do you love vegetables? Oh, my favorite is broccoli. Broccoli is my favorite with cheese. Yum! My favorite thing to eat is carrots, especially the carrots that grow in Krakenhopper Field. Never heard of that before. I wonder if the character in our story we're going to read lives around Krakenhopper Field. Hmm. But now I fear the carrots are out to get me. Oh no, carrots out to get him. Who could our character be? Let's see the book. 
trying to think of the animal or person that would eat carrots. It's a rabbit. And the title of our story that we're going to read together is called Creepy Carrots. Look at that. Here is our main character. And those carrots look really spooky, don't they? It is written by Aaron Reynolds. That's the author. The author writes the words and illustrated by Peter Brown. You'll remember the illustrator draws the pictures. So let's see what our book, Creepy Carrots, is about. Look at all those carrots inside the front cover. Ooh, and one creepy one. I wonder if you get this book from the library or store, if you can count the number of carrots you see. Creepy carrots. Here we go. Jasper Rabbit had a passion for carrots. That means he really, really loved carrots. And the carrots that grew in Cracker Hoppin Field were the best, fat, crisp, and were free for the taking. So there he is chomping down on some carrots. Look at him. Oh, he looks so happy to be around so many carrots. He pulled some for a morning snack on the way to school. Ugh. He yanked out a few on his way to Little League practice. Ugh. There he is. He ripped them from the ground on his way home at night. Jasper couldn't get enough carrots. Look at all those carrots around him, and he has a big smile on his face. He loves carrots, doesn't he? Until... They started following him. <gasps> there he is walking, and there's the carrots creeping behind him. He first noticed something strange after the big game against the East Valley Hares. Jasper was about to help himself to a victory snack when he heard it. The soft, sinister, tunk, 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 tunk of carrots. There they are. Oh no. He turned, but there was nothing there. Just my imagination, he thought, but he hopped a little faster. That night, as he was brushing his teeth, there they were. Jasper whipped around, but nothing. He laughed at himself picked his toothbrush off the floor and went to bed quickly. So Jasper thought he saw some carrots by his bathtub, but it turns out it was a rubber duck, some shampoo, and a washcloth, all the same color as carrots. The next morning, he approached Krakenhopper Field slowly. Look, there he is creeping. He starts there, then there, behind the trees and in the log. He reached for two wild carrots. Nothing happened. He bit into one. Crunch. Nothing happened. Phew. Creepy carrots. It was ridiculous. But when he arrived home that evening, Mom! Mom! Jasper screamed, Creepy carrots in the shed! Look, there he is. His mom opened the door slowly. There weren't any carrots, not even the regular kind. So you remember last time he looked in the bathroom and he thought he saw carrots? This time he's looking in the shed and it looks like there's some pruners here and a chainsaw and some paint. Oh, I wonder if he's seen carrots after all. Later that night, as Jasper lay in bed, he heard it breathing terrible carroty breathing and there on his wall creepy carrots he shouted dad dad his dad thumped into his bedroom and threw on the light there's the creepy carrot they searched under the bed no creepy carrots they looked through the closet no creepy carrots they opened the dresser drawers no Creepy carrots. 
just a bad dream, son, his dad said, shaking his head. Now go to sleep. Now that wasn't going to happen. Have you had sleepless nights like that? Well, you're wide awake because something has scared you. I have. By the end of the week, Jasper was seeing creepy carrots creeping everywhere. Jasper knew his parents were wrong. Creepy carrots were real and they were coming for him. But they couldn't get him if they couldn't get out. Now, do you guys see the light there? That means he has an idea. He's, I wonder what he's gonna do. I think he has a plan to trap the carrots. What do you think? Jasper hatched a plan. First thing on Saturday, he grabbed supplies and headed to Krakenhopper Field. There's his supplies, there's all the carrots. And he's building with a bulldozer and watering with two water hoses and nailing with a hammer. As the sun finally set across Kraken Hopper Field, Jasper Rabbit smiled. On his way home, there were no tunk, tunk, tunk. There were no carrot shaped shadows. His plan had worked. No creepy carrots would ever get out of that carrot patch again. Look at how big that fence is. Here he is, here's Jasper. He even put a moat with a bunch of crocodiles all around it. And as the sun finally set, the carrots of Krakenhopper Field cheered, hooray! Their creepy plan had worked. They were sure of it. Jasper Rabbit would never get into that carrot patch ever again. <laughs> the end. So it sounds like the fence helped Jasper and it helped the carrots, right? Because now they won't get eaten. I wonder if you can build a fence out of the materials you have in your home to keep something inside. I thought about doing that for today's project, but opted for some art instead. So I hope that you check out this story. I have some more book recommendations for you if you liked this one. Right now, we're gonna move on to our foundational skill, which is taking the sounds apart in words. We're gonna focus on a beginning sound and look, we have a bunch of creepy carrots over here. They've all gotten loose. We need to figure out where they go. So you're gonna have to help me. I'm gonna pull some carrots off and in the back there's a picture. I'm gonna say the name of the picture and you're gonna help me put where it belongs here on our, pump, on our carrot patch. So let's take a look. Ooh, look at that. Can you see that face? That means scared. Let's think of the beginning sound. Scared. That's right, it's S. Let's put our carrot in the S. Is that an S or that one? That's an S, that's right. In you go, creepy carrot. All right, let's see the next one. Look at this carrot, it's really creepy. It has one snaggle tooth. And in the back is the word crunch. That's the sound that carrots make when you eat them, right? When Jasper was eating them in the story, he said crunch. What is the beginning sound or first sound of crunch? K crunch, k k k. That's right, that's the sound the C makes. So let's find our C up here. There it is. In goes our creepy carrot. In you go. Next one, let's do the one down here. Ooh, this is a good one. Lunch. Jasper ate lots of carrots for lunch. Now let's take that word lunch and figure out the beginning sound of the first sound you hear, lunch. Ooh, what letter makes the ooh sound? That's right, it's an L. And I think there's a nice cozy L right here for our creepy to carrot to go into. There it goes. Next one. How about this one? It's a smile, smile is the beginning sound, and that's the sound the letter S makes. So here's the letter S. Let's do one more here, maybe two more. 
Oh no, this is something I'm scared of. Spider, what's the beginning sound? S. Do you remember what letter makes that sound? Letter S, that's right. Do I have another little S spot? We'll put them right here with this. Spider. We'll do one more before we move on to our project. Oh no, this one's frightened. Do you remember? That's another word for scared. F, f. What letter makes the f, f sound? Let's write an F. Let me find an F. Here's a spot for a creepy carrot to go in. So I hope that you try an activity like this at home. Right now we're going to move over to our project place and finish up our artwork inspired by Edward Monk. Okay, let's walk over. Now for this project, you are going to need some paints. Remember, I said if you want to join me, bring your paints. So I brought the primary colors, which are red, yellow, and blue, and I bought some black and white so I can lighten or darken them. We're actually going to create a print. We're going to focus on printmaking because Edward Monk actually created many versions of his artwork, The Scream. He did some in oil pastels and some in paints, so that inspired me to think of this activity. So the supplies you'll need are a pan, like I said, paints, some brushes, and something to put your paints in, like a paper plate and, of course, some paper. So what we're going to do is we're going to paint right on our pan. And when we're done with our design, we're going to squish a paper on there and then lift it up to see our design. And we can do that multiple times. So let's get started. I think that the first color I'm going to use is this beautiful orange color. Isn't that a deep orange? It reminds me of the pumpkins we made last week. What other things might be orange where you are? I wonder if you have an orange hat, orange socks, an orange couch, orange door. Now, do you remember what two colors we use to make orange? We actually use red. I'm gonna put a little dab of red and yellow, that's right. So I'm gonna put some red and some yellow right there. And my favorite part is mixing them together. So there I go, mixing them so you can see. Oh, I think I was a little heavy with the red. I didn't follow my own trick from last time. Do you remember what I told you? Add more yellow. And there I go, adding tons of red. Red is a bossy color. It likes to take over everything. Okay, I think I got some orange hue in there. Part of the fun of this activity is mixing colors together, but if you just want to use paints in the colors that you see in the Edward Monk's The Scream, you can do that too. So I'm going to use this. It kind of looks a little more red than I wanted, but I'll still use it. And I'm going to paint right on my pan. I'm going to paint some swirls. Now, in order for this activity to work, you kind of have to work quickly, and you have to put a little more paint on than you normally would. Okay, so there's some swirls. And I'm actually going to add a little more yellow here, and maybe just add a little bit of red, not too much. Okay, that red, I tell you. Oh, there's my orange. I was wondering where you went. I was trying to mix you. There you go. All right. Now, I never hear people say that orange is their favorite color. I usually hear pink or purple or blue. I feel like orange doesn't get enough love. Okay, so there I go. I'm just kind of mixing the top part. And those, if you remember, are warm colors. Warm colors from the color wheel. And then maybe I'll mix in some yellow. I'll put that on my plate as well. And mix them up in here. Here we go. Of course, it's coming out a little orange. I've chosen to use the same paintbrush, but you can do whatever it is is comfortable to you. If you don't like mixing colors like I have, you can use one paintbrush for each color. Okay, there's what it's looking like. Now I think I'm gonna mix my cool colors. So remember, the cool colors are your blues and purples that are right here, and that's the river part right there. So I'm gonna do a mix. Now this is my interpretation or version, or the way I see Edward Monk's artwork. 
You can create it however you want to. I'm gonna add some white because I love mixing colors. You can't just leave it plain. Then I'm gonna mix them together like this. Oh, look at that beautiful rich blue. The sky hasn't been blue where I live in a very long time. It has been smoky. I can't wait for blue skies again. Although skies here would probably be wintry blue, wouldn't they? I'm just gonna create warm and cool color tones inspired by our painting here. Now I didn't tell you last time, but guess what? In 2004, somebody stole Edward Monk's The Scream. And it happened in 1994 as well, which is quite recent. See, art is worth a lot of money, especially famous art like this. Okay, so here's my warm and cool colors inspired by my painting. Kind of looks like that. I'm gonna run out of time, so I wanna show you the next step. Of course, you can use some black and you can add your person. Maybe I will. I think we have just enough time to do that. I'm gonna use some pure black and I'm gonna add my person in the middle screaming. Now, what made him scream? What made him want to draw or paint somebody screaming? Well, I read that he actually said he heard nature screaming. I wonder if he meant that we were, you know, tearing down trees too much or driving too many cars. I'm not sure. But he said that when he painted this, it was a deep, scream from nature. Okay, that's my scream person. Okay, here comes the fun part. You can do, you can add details as much as you want. You can go back and add your bridge, but I'm going to show you how to make your print. So you're going to take your paper and you're going to put it right on top. And I have this fancy thing that I got at the place where everything's a dollar. And I'm just going to scrape it along. You can use your hands too might do that. Paper wants to curl. And the fun part, it's like a surprise. I never know what I'm going to get when I lift it up. Ooh, what do you think? <laughs> a little curly. The paint is making it want to curl. Doesn't that look neat? It kind of adds a different texture than if you just paint it on the paper, right? Let me try one more and then we'll sing our goodbye song. You can paint and do it over and over again. Add more paint. I thought in the classroom this would be nice for a collaborative project. This one's a little softer, more abstract. You can just add more paint to keep it going. So I hope you try this activity at home. For right now, I'm gonna go over and sing our alphabet song together. I think we have time for our long one, so here we go. A is for amazing, that's what you are. B is for brave, that'll carry you far. C is for caring and community. And D is for determined to be the best I can be. E is for empathy, caring for all. F is for friends, that'll catch you when you fall. G is for grateful for everything around. And H is for hopeful, there's more good to be found. I is for imagine all the fun things we could do. J is for joyful, how I feel when I'm with you. K is for kind to people and animals too. And L is for love, put it in all that you do. M is for mindful, be present every day. N is for nice words in everything you say. O is for original, always be you. And P is for persevere until you make it through. Q is for quiet, those bad thoughts. R is for remember all the greatness that you've got. S is for strong, body and mind. And T is for talent, why not make yours being kind? U is for unique, special and loved. V is for victorious, always rise above. W is for worthy and wonderful too. X, don't X out those mistakes, they're what make you you.
Y is for yes, we're at the end of our rhyme. And that's the alphabet. I'll see you next time. All right, boys and girls, I'll see you next time for more spooky fun. I hope that you come back. A big squeeze and a big smooch from me to you. I hope that you come back and bring your books and paints with you for more fun. Goodbye.